Hello dear friends, dear perfume lovers, fragrance enthusiasts. Today I was feeling really camera shy, but I can't wait to share with you my thoughts on Olibanum, the fragrance house. So I found a compromise. I'm gonna film in my old format, hands and tables and fragrances. I got my discovery set on an official website, Olibanum. It was something like 50 euros maybe, there are 18 fragrances and it's called collection set. So there are three little books, books, boxes, with six fragrances each. So it's almost the whole line of Olibanum except for Vetiver. This one I haven't received, it's the fragrance number 19 that I didn't have a chance to try unfortunately. Olibanum is the perfume house exploring the note of Olibanum incense, resinous note, beautiful note. Each fragrance talks about one particular accord, one particular note, but every single of them has olibanum in the base. And it makes me think uh, this way. Imagine the soft, warm bread, this comforting, delicious, warm dough, the soft part of the bread. This is olibanum. And all the accords, roses, yuzu, Saffron, it's like the different topping, different spreads on top of the slice of this bread. Olibanum adds warmth, comfort, skin-like qualities, viscosity even to the fragrance. It's just such a beautiful note when each fragrance falls down, dries down to olibanum, something magical happens. I can say I like almost every fragrance in a dry down when it reaches the olibanum stage. But some fragrances I like more than others, so let's begin, let's see what we have here. Scent number one is called Opoponax. Opoponax. <laughs> Honestly, it's the discovery uh, of the discovery box. It's the scent that surprised me the most. I didn't expect that I would love it so much. I was wearing it today and yesterday. <laughs> And many, many times I have maybe half of sample left. Apoponax, a specific resin with tonka bean, with toffee facets and pink pepper. This is giving me the nicest feeling of buttery sand cookies or in general the feeling of warm and uh, sandy texture. I was looking for the scent that would bring me this sensation of um, warm sand, warm stone. There it is, no need to look any further. Yeah, that's definitely, wow, the sandiness, this texture, compare it to biscuits, compare it to the soft, warm sand on the beach. Mm. Plus all those gourmand notes, delicious notes, and a touch of pink pepper. So, so good. One of the best in this box, maybe the best, <laughs> let's see. Mm. It can be good on men especially. It's uh, a bit sweet, very warm and crispy sandy. It's quite serious scent. Uh, not serious, but maybe grounding, meditative. This is how I want to smell right now in autumn, in this season. So very ambery, very enveloping, pretty strong fragrance. I, I put one spray and usually it's enough. It's, mm, it's diffusive. One thing I forgot to mention, all the fragrances from Olibanum from the house are designed to be layered. Each, each fragrance is quite minimalistic, but being based on Olibanum, uh, the note that unites all the fragrances is the perfect for layering. You can play with those fragrances, creating so many different combinations, but some are more classic, more, hmm, more successful, let's say. So in the box I had this kind of map menu of, of, the, of the discovery set and here they provide some most suitable combinations, layering combinations. So Apoponax is uh, good to be layered with Saffron and Osmanthus. My favorite combo is Apoponax and Vanilla. Vanilla is gonna be our next fragrance. We'll get to that in a moment. My favorite layering combinations I will tell you in the end of the video and Opoponax Vanilla is one of them. It's so, so good. Wow, this vanilla, 
<laughs> beautiful again resinous resinous vanilla with lots of spices lots of warmth and potent mm. in my opinion it belongs to the same vanilla subcategory as Vanna Gloria from Laboratorial Fatigue and Baby Cat from Yves Saint Laurent w YSL YSL thick dark spiced up amber vanilla I like it it's elegant mm put together yet pretty delicate what i mean by that it's not a relaxed cozy uh, slouchy vanilla for evenings on a sofa with a movie no it's pretty mm, pretty solid put together in my opinion it's appropriate for everyday use it's kind of strict tailored vanilla yeah it can be a great signature amber scent it has a note of Styrax, another resinous note, responsible for this leathery facet of fragrance. That is also something that makes this fragrance more strict. A touch of leather just belongs here. It makes the fragrance a bit more memorable, a bit more... Hmm, a bit more unisex, yeah? Uh, but overall it's an ambery beautiful vanilla. Spicy, delicious. So Apopanax and Vanilla are among my most favorite fragrances from the house, from the discovery set. And together it's a magical, magical, spicy, sandy, ambery something. Something that smells good, that melts on your skin, that becomes so warm and appealing on your skin. Great combination. Next fragrance I have here is Yuzu. Yeah, why not? Let's have some fresh air. Mm -hmm. Yuzu. Yuzu, as you can guess, is a citrusy fragrance. Like vanilla, can be such a great signature scent. It can be a citrusy signature. It has a character, it has style. And when I smell it, I think it's simple, simple, nothing groundbreaking, but it smells so special. I guess it is so because Again, the resinous olibanum base. As a citrus, yuzu is more green and bitter than, uh, let's say, mandarine or orange blossom or orange. The notes I found on the website, gayak wood, yuzu, sparkly mandarin. So there is some sweetness from mandarin. I have never tried yuzu in real life as a fruit, but it reminds me lime, maybe because of this bitterness uh, and it smells a bit like lime to me. It's very fresh, sour, green, leafy green, bitter. Of course, the resinous olibanum base, uh, it gets warmer, it gets sweeter, softer. Exactly like that bread. Olibanum is a warm slice of bread with zesty yuzu marmalade. <laughs> I cannot say it's an impressive citrusy fragrance, but it's very enjoyable, especially for the citrusy lovers good to test to experience very lovely citrus next fragrance i have here is umbret umbret is clean girl aesthetic this may be the first umbret scent that i actually like it's very clean bright zesty lemony on the start but then it dries down into the softest most pleasant huggy musky veil mm. I doubt that everyone will enjoy such a strong citrusy opening. Like it's very clean, very pungent, but if you do, the development of the scent will make you happy because it's a gradient from energetic to soft and fuzzy. There is the note of almond and vanilla. Vegetal, musky, vanillic, fuzzy scent. It smells quite feminine to my personal taste. Exactly like I said, this clean girl aesthetic, sexy girl, Instagram aesthetic, busy morning in the city, comforting evening on a beige sofa, the total beige Pinterest aesthetic. That's the vibe. Very urban, very contemporary feeling, but also skin-like and seductive. Very good fragrance. Usually when I try fragrances with umbre, I regret that it's not an actual mask animalic mask but this one the first umbrella scent that i quite enjoyed 
of course I'm spraying the scents on paper just for the video. I don't have enough skin for 18 fragrances, but I tried every single of them on my skin. And so I can say that Umbred develops into the most huggy musky veil. 18 fragrances, oh, my table is gonna smell. Mm. Iris, next fragrance is Iris. Another surprising discovery. So currently I'm going through my most favorite fragrances. Iris, powdery, fuzzy, soft, yet fresh. And mm, I feel a light note of greenish citrus, but just a touch somewhere hidden on the background. The main character is a creamy Iris, smooth. What do they say? They say a silky, salty iris with solar sparkles of jasmine and violet. I love this iris story. Mm, it has all the attributes of olfactory iris, powderiness, light sadness, a touch of vintage cosmetic, but it's full of lightness, hope and elegance. Mm, I love to wear it. For me, this is the iris worth a bottle. Again, especially the development of it, the dry down, the iris based on olibanum mixed with resinous note on the skin, it's something amazing. In my opinion, it's one of the most diffusive and enveloping scents in the collection. I just love how it sits on me, mm. like a well-tailored silk dress, so smooth. It's a big like, one of my favorite fragrances from the box. There are a few more fragrances in the other boxes that I also love, as much as I love Iris. But yeah, that's one of the best. I get a bit of violet, mm, touch of leather, touch of greenness, some uh, salty, soury, savory facet, but very delicate. First of all, it's a creamy Iris, creamy, fluffy, powdery Iris. They suggest to layer iris with rose or vanilla, but my favorite combo is with mate. We're gonna talk about mate fragrance, tea fragrance. I just tried and I discovered that I really love this combo. When it starts with the tea note and develops into a floral and powdery base, for me that was a surprise. Let's continue. Then we have queer vegetal. Mm vegetal leather. Okay, um, without knowing that it is designed as a queer leathery scent, I wouldn't even think that it's a leather. It smells like burnt wood. It's mostly woody. <laughs> it's a woody fragrance. Uh, woody smoke of cedar. It seems that uh, they also used possibly notes of birch tar and black wood to bring this leathery potency of the fragrance. Interesting approach. I see it as a black quenching coals. I don't like it that much. It gives me the sensation that I want to wash it off. It's maybe too smoky for my taste, too woody, too burnt. Uh, funny way olibanum plays in here. It smells very nutty. It's like roasted hazelnuts in the base. That aspect I like, but overall the fragrance is just not my type. I thought maybe I can try to layer it with something. I tried, but honestly, I just don't want to wear this particular scent. It's not for me. It's too rough, too raw. Roasted nuts, a little bit burnt <laughs> with the smoky uh, fumes of cedar wood. Yeah, not my favorite fragrance, honestly. Okay, we're done with the first box. Okay, there we go. Patchouli, yes, I love patchouli. Mm. What can I say? It's a um, liquid, <laughs> velvety patchouli, juicy patchouli, amber patchouli. It's not herbal, it's not uh, green, leafy, mm, but more like, uh, like a tea-like patchouli like fermented, yeah, the fermented velvety patchouli. There are notes of um, cacao and cashmere. 
I don't clearly feel them, but I guess they bring this softness, the texture, the plasticity and this kind of blanket effect, <laughs> the Kashmiran, Kashmir blanket. You know the story of how patchouli came to Europe when the Kashmir shawls, uh, scarves, were imported to Europe, they were wrapped in patchouli leaves to, pre to prevent um, moths and mold. And here it is, this airy cashmere scarf infused with patchouli. I just love how they, they added the note of cashmere on in here to create this uh, wool effect, the wool patchouli. Mm, I like it and as a patchouli dominant scent it's pretty impressive and addictive and quite unique in a way. I like to layer it with, guess what, the rose. <laughs> let's talk about the rose. Yeah, patchouli is approved, but let's, let's grab the rose. Rose fragrance. What I love about the layering um, Olibano fragrances is, is that you have a control of how much fragrance you want to put on yourself. You can go from pretty light, minimalistic one uh, fragrance um, wear to a complex, intense evening style. For example, rose patchouli combination. For me to enjoy the rose patchouli, fragrance, it needs to have the right proportion. I prefer to have a little bit more rose than patchouli. Then it works. So with this couple, I can really create what I want, what I need. When I got my boxes, my discovery set, the first scent I reached for was rose. Maybe because I'm just a crazy rose lover. Rose and vanilla are among my top, top favorite notes. A dewy rose juiced up by the red berries accord. It is more green than you may think, but still it's a resinous rose olibanum base. But I clearly get this leafy greenness, even a bit of leathery facets. I just love rose and perfumery. For me it's hard not to like this rose. This one is nothing impressive, just good. And it's also perfect for layering with patchouli, with matte to create a tea rose effect, with even some leathery or woody scents. Doesn't have to be olibanum range, what, whatever leathery scent you have. Strange, but um, I get this firm, leathery, cold heart in this scent. Mm, that's why I think it's a great tool to bloom some of your leathery scents, suede fragrances. It will match easily, I think. I don't have that many leathery scents, so I wasn't able to really test. I tried it with Queer Vegetal, didn't like it because I don't like the previous fragrance. But um, so light but firm. It sits on top of other fragrances, it lands on them like a butterfly. Just such a light airy scent yeah perfect to be mixed with patchouli or mate let me check what do they suggest best mate or cardamom i didn't like it with cardamom <laughs> cardamom there you are well this one is boozy sexy hot enveloping fragrance like warming up fragrance i'm gonna read from the website Captivating cardamom coated with a tad of lavender, evaporating in woody wisps of uh, cedarwood and patchouli. It also has the notes of Davana. It's green. It's pretty green. I also get some floral and fruity canvas in here, painted with some spices. Exactly that. Mm, fruits, floral, spices. But maybe it's just a note of cardamom developing different facets. I don't know. I don't think perfumers and perfume houses list all the ingredients that uh, went to the particular perfume. So if I get something that is not listed, it might as well be there. So yeah, some floral, some fruity touches. It's pretty attractive scent, quite sensual, and the resinous olibanum base in here, just a perfect match. But <laughs> I quickly get 
tired of it alone. Maybe layering would affect my attitude, but in that case I would, I would go for layering combinations with something more impactful. So, so it can tame the card a moment here. Maybe the other option for layering is to soften it down, maybe with uh, umbrette or some musky note, maybe iris. I don't know, I have to experiment a bit more. Overall, it's not my favorite scent. I wouldn't reach for it just because I get tired of it very quickly. But the scent itself is, is pretty pleasant to my nose. Yeah, just maybe not my favorite. Let's continue. Next fragrance is uh, Ginger, Jean Chambre. Okay. <laughs> it's a ginger energized by joyous citruses and warmed up by a touch of woody caramel. Yeah, maybe this caramel in the base, I don't know. I was hoping for a fresher ginger, a ginger juice, this energizing scent, awakening scent like a ginger shot. That's what I was hoping for, but what I got instead is um, sugar-coated, melted, rather sweet scent with uh, some saffron facets. It's very dense, very resinous because of this heavy, heavy caramel node. Uh, it's, it, it is kind of sticky as a texture, <laughs> a bit nutty even, but yeah. I can't say I'm very attracted to this scent. And honestly, this is the scent profile I left in 2016's, 18's. The caramel, sweet, suffocating fragrances. Maybe I'm just not in my caramel period. I'm sure some of the users will definitely enjoy this fragrance. Mm, it, it has a character. If ginger, mm, caramelized ginger sounds good for you, then maybe that's, that's the one. Not a big fan of this fragrance. Oh, next we have Sakra. Sakra is very special. It's, it's super minimalistic. Well, I was hoping that I'm gonna fall in love with this one because um, I saw on the website that it has a note of balsam fir, but it didn't impress me that much. It's a pretty clear olibanum designed this way to be just olibanum dominant with the hint of balsam fir. They suggest to layer it with any other scent from the house to bring out the note of olibanum. It smells quite foresty, quite piney. Mm but it doesn't spark my imagination. It, it feels flat for me, but maybe because I need to layer it with something, otherwise I don't um, feel the joy of discovery, exciting development. It, it, it's missing something. <laughs> it's just a pleasant, fresh, foresty odor, pine trees in the snow. It has some coldness, mm, some freshness, Yet, it has a lot of cold resin in the base. This is the case when olibanum uh, is not the soft, warm, fresh bread from the oven. But this is something like an olibanum cracker. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's a cold fragrance with a distinct pine and olibanum notes. I tried to layer it with something. What did I try? Let me think. I think I tried it with uh, Opoponax and I didn't like the effect. It didn't blend in together well enough. Mm, yeah, well, honestly, Sakura is not my favorite fragrance. It feels very flat. Last fragrance in the box is Oud. Oud and Saffron fragrances from this discovery set. Honestly, I tested them the last. I was postponing my introduction to oud and saffron because those are the notes that scare me. But no, nothing to be scared of. I'm usually very careful with oud and saffron because I feel like those two can be so aggressive, so masculine. But no, oud is lovely. Mm. 
I like the bitter woodiness and the strong rose heart. It has a very distinct note of rose, very prominent. It's an oud rose scent. For me, it feels very delicate, clear oud with some spices, pimento berry and leathery facets. It is wrapped in rose petals in a very nice wearable way, grounding, muted, evoking some dark gray, dark green color palette in my mind. It's like a dark gray scent, tamed oud. It's okay. I'm okay with it. I can't say it's a huge love. I can't say I'm a big fan, but I say yes to this wood fragrance. Let's grab our next box. And here we have Saffron. I was just talking about you, my dear. Saffron surprised me so much. Wow. It surprised me with its um, berry sweet opening, almost bubblegummy. They mentioned some notes of vanilla, spices, tobacco blonde. I get a spicy berry jam, maybe some baked apples, like the marmalade accord. Very unique. All those uh, deliciousness without being uber sweet, being actually fruity and uh, juicy even. Now it's a uh, it's pretty unique and actually very strange and very new for me. Another discovery of the discovery set. I like it a lot. It's just just the balance of leathery nuances, saffron and sweetness, fruitiness that stands out. It, it's totally unique scent in my opinion. I was like, wow, I'm still a bit wow. What's that? <laughs> I just get this um, super inviting in my opinion. There is definitely this bubble gumminess that makes it a bit more playful. I don't know what is so magical in here. What, what did they put in, inside? But the scent is super appealing. Mm, I don't know, it has a bit of shampoo mm, effect even, but it's a big like. I, I didn't expect I would enjoy it so much. If you have a chance to try saffron from Olibano, maybe you can Tell me in the comments, what do you think about this fragrance? Because for me, this is one of a kind saffron. Bubble gummy saffron, wow. Next fragrance is Santal. One of the most disappointing fragrances for me today. I'm a big lover of sandalwood fragrances, but this one is just not for me. First of all, because of the cumin note, it has cumin, sweaty, spicy, dirty, Cumin that was uh, roughly stirred into the creaminess of sandalwood. It's almost repulsing to me. Wow. I'm sure some can find it appealing, but I want to be honest, I don't enjoy sandalwood um, with the cumin note. Also, also, I see on the website that it has a note of ylang. That's definitely not my fragrance. Ylang Ylang and Kumin are among my least favorite notes. So no, I cannot wear such thing. But please remember that fragrances are a personal choice. If I don't like it, doesn't mean that you will not enjoy it. It's definitely a creamy sandalwood. Super, super creamy, powdery. There might be also some notes of heliotrope or iris or violet because there is something that adds this cosmetic feel to the fragrance but on top of it you definitely get a bright spicy sweaty note of cumin in my opinion it takes this fragrance to a bit more masculine direction mm. but this is a personal understanding of this scent well i don't like it just being honest next fragrance we have is neroli well, that, that was a tricky one because did I mention that I don't like Neroli fragrance? I feel like I'm saying this in, in every video. Nothing changes. I, I don't like Neroli dominant fragrances. When it's just a solo, clean Neroli, it feels like the most boring thing ever. But the development of this fragrance surprised me a lot. In the opening, I do get the pretty simple floral citrusy neroli, 
But I have to admit that the dry down of the scent is totally different kind. Olibanum base creates magic with this simple note of neroli. It smells on my skin very voluminous, very feminine. It's a feminine floral scent with the character of, let's say, custom-made, memorable signature scent. I still don't like neroli, but the way it develops is a big surprise for me. I was in the kitchen cooking something and I couldn't realize like what smells so good? Is it my madeleine that I'm cooking? What smells so good? Until I realized that I have a touch of neroli on my skin. This fragrance sits on the skin so nicely, radiating its beauty. The dry down is fantastic. For neroli lovers, it's highly recommended to try this scent. But even if you don't like neroli, you will be impressed by how olibanum base plays in this fragrance. And it's definitely worth waiting for this warm dry down, this olibanum with florals. Wow. And then we have, I think it's a tuberose, yes. Tuberose, yes. Oh, it's a resinous tuberose. It's very heady, thick, oily even. It's super carnal. And in a company of ylang, -ylang Personally, I don't want to wear this scent at all. I don't enjoy it. I just think that there, there are tuberose fragrances much better than this one. What I can say is, okay, there is depth. There is sensuality. It's dirty. It's very dirty, poisonous, floral. But that's what makes it stand out. Because all the rest in the box is much softer, friendlier, warmer. This one just jumps on you. There she is, the tuberose. She's a bitch, I wanted to say. Uh, but yeah, she is uncompromising, independent. Tuberose and Ylang, the floral body is the main character here, not Olibanum. It is still pretty thick, creamy, sexy floral from the beginning to the end. I prefer fresh, youthful, bubblegummy tuberoses. This is totally the opposite. And uh, then we have Mate. Oh, I'm so happy. Mate is a good one. This, oh yeah. Mate is a scent with such a luxury feel. <laughs> like, I honestly, I love to be surrounded by this airy tea scent. It has the hint of spearmint. It's one of the lightest, non-offensive scents um, evoking the sensation of luxury spa, morning in a luxury hotel. It's fresh, it's uh, light, a bit bitter, possibly with the touch of asperidics. I feel some citrusy, some green leaves. It's a very calming, meditative scent, therapeutic even. It tells you that everything is gonna be fine. It's fine, it's peaceful. Tea scents are therapists among the fragrances. <laughs> it makes my nose happy. Again, one of my favorite fragrances from the box. It's a tea fragrance, but when you smell it, you can really think of the mate or even matcha because of the greenness. It immediately evokes the green color in my mind. My husband also quite enjoyed this one along with yuzu. Yuzu and mate are actually a great layering combination, one of my favorites. As you can see, I'm missing one fragrance and I hate to say it, but there was supposed to be a smantus, but I lost it. This is not typical for me because I'm a very organized person. Everything has a place in my house, in my bag, but somehow Osmanthus ran away. But luckily I tried it at least once. And so what I can say is it's a tea fragrance with peachy nuances. You definitely get the Osmanthus. And from what I remember, it was pretty minimalistic. You just get the bitterness of Osmanthus with not many other things involved. The development of it, the dry down, I honestly don't remember. I don't remember getting to that stage, but I can say it reminded me in that particular moment when I tried it first. It reminded me one of the Hima Jomo fragrances. It reminded me the chai fragrance. That's what I was able to drag from my memory. I'm so sorry, but I cannot review Osmanthus very well because, well, I don't have it anymore. So, 
How about my favorite layering combinations? Yes. All the layering combinations are presented in this little map, this little booklet that you can find in the discovery set. It's very handy and very fun to explore. But I have my own top five layering combinations. Number five is iris and mate, floral and tea. I like the softness, the musky of muskiness of iris, and then I enjoy the touch of mate on top of it. It's like um, it gives freshness, but then it develops into a soft, smooth iris. My cat wants to break in. Come inside. Mm -hmm. You want to say hi to everyone? Ooh, that might be so much olfactory information for one small cat. <laughs> you are so cute. <laughs> you are so lovely. Where did we stop? Iris and Mate, number five. Number four. Number four, Rose and Mate. Again, florals and tea. Especially I like Rose and Mate because that creates the tea rose effect. Rose from Olibanum is, like I said, somewhat cold and greenish and layering with Mate is just a perfect match. I love tea roses and fragrances and this one is not, mm, not that simple eventually. If you layer Rose and Mate, you will end up with pretty informative and very beautiful combo. Number three is Opoponax and Rose. That, in my opinion, creates this kind of rose of the desert effect. The sandiness, the sweetness of Apoponax with the rose on top of it. Like I said, the rose just sits on top of Olibanum like a butterfly. That creates uh, somewhat, um, let's say, oriental perfume with resinous base and beautiful rose on top. Apoponax plus rose. In this combination, the rose plays like a breeze, like a fresh air in this desert. <laughs> so it's a very nice contrast between the lightness and the, the warmth, the sandy texture of Opoponax. Very interesting. Then number two is Yuzu and Mate. So simple, so delicious. Citrus and tea, that cannot go wrong. Especially my husband, like, he likes both of them, Yuzu and Mate. Together it's a citrusy cup of tea, so refreshing, so energizing, like a boost of freshness, confidence, good mood, fantastic combo. And the layering combination number one is Apoponax and Vanilla. <laughs> That's my favorite because I like those two separately, but when I blend them together it's the most indulgent and very suitable for autumn. For this particular season, in this particular moment. Apoponax plus vanilla is my most favorite combo, especially in a proportion two to one. Two Apoponax, one vanilla, because vanilla is super potent and super spicy. So that's it. This is how I feel about this discovery set. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have tried Olibano fragrances, let me know which ones are your favorite. If you haven't, I can recommend this house for sampling. The price is appropriate in my opinion and you get 18 fragrances for 50 euros, so there is a lot to explore. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.